This is Witchbase News for Friday the 3rd of December 2021 ...I'm Commander Burr. In Elite Dangerous news this week ...Frontier share their end of year message to the community as update 9 approaches we have an early preview of the lighting changes arriving next week we now know when we're getting our first look at fleet carrier interiors we have a heads up on when you'll likely be able to acquire those pre-engineered FSDs again and we have some nuggets of information gleaned from last nights livestream and more. To make sure you don't miss any of our videos hit like and subscribe and remember to click the little bell icon and select all notifications and if you'd like to help directly support this channel you can also join our Patreon via the link in the video description. We start this week with news that the Frontier hosted community meetup that was scheduled to take place in Cambridge in the UK on December the 10th has unfortunately had to be postponed until February the 25th next year. The sudden and unexpected change of plans like a lot of things in these complicated times is due to the sudden rise of the Omicron Covid variant which itself reads like a line from a science fiction video game but sadly is very real. If you're now unable to go and would like a full refund there's a link to the forum post below from Frontier with full details. If not your existing ticket will be carried over to the new date. On the Tuesday livestream this week Zach announced that the SRV stunt videos that were submitted by commanders following a call to the community by Frontier back in September were being integrated into a livestream event that the company will be broadcasting next week. The event, which will follow a slightly different format to what we're used to from the Cambridge developers usual twice a week livestreams will in fact be pre-recorded and streamed with the community managers still present in chat. In case you missed the original competition announcement any commander who submitted a clip of them performing a stunt for the event was promised to receive a pulse blue SRV paint job whether their stunt was used for the event or not. We don't yet know specifically when the livestream stunt show will be going live only that it's next week but Frontier generally publishes a table of the events for the week on Mondays and that table includes any livestream scheduled. As soon as we know we'll share the table on our YouTube community page so if you're subscribed to the channel you'll see it pop up there. As part of the Frontier livestream last night lead community manager Arthur Tolmy spoke a little about update 9 that is arriving in Elite Dangerous Odyssey next week. Alongside further optimizations and fixes and as we reported earlier in the week the update includes new NPC mission givers at Odyssey settlements and a new multi limpet controller module that will also be arriving in Elite Dangerous Horizons for consoles and PC. As part of the livestream discussion Arthur also shared some preview images of the planetside ambient lighting changes to Odyssey that are coming as part of the update alongside comparison shots of how the game looks now and the difference is fairly stark. The colour and hue of the local starlight will now more accurately be reflected on the ground particularly at sunrise and sunset. It's a change that is bound to be gratefully received in particular by the games very active photography and videography community as well as the many explorers. The other big headliner for update 9 is of course the new combat focused multi crew capable SRV for good reason as well. It's the first new SRV to be deployed into the game since Horizons introduced the concept of the diminutive modular folding planetary rover way back in December of 2015. Very few details are known about the new SRV other than its name. It was once referred to on stream by community manager Bruce Garrido as the Scorpion but aside from the multi crew component and its combat focus that's about it. One nugget of information we did manage to glean last night however following a question from the chat was Arthur did reveal that the SRV will not require a new hangar bay to be fitted to your ship 
we're assuming from that that the Scorpion is similar in size to the Scarab SRV and will fit into one of the existing SRV bays. It's a small detail but anyone who has outfitted an SRV bay will know that once fitted the bay then needs an SRV explicitly purchased and installed into it. It seems likely then that following its arrival in the game we'll see two SRV types as an option there rather than a Scorpion specific bay. CQC aficionados may be curious to learn as well that when Arthur was asked by chat any CQC news the reply was ...not yet with a deliberate look to the camera. We did hear prior to the launch of Elite Dangerous Odyssey that CQC would be coming to the expansion in some regard. There's even been speculation here at the Burr Pit that what we see as surface conflict zones in the game at the moment feels an awful lot more like a CQC style game than it does a conflict over control in a system. Whatever the case it seems CQC of some flavour or another is on the cards for Odyssey's future still which is good to hear. As is always the case whenever Frontier speaks to the player base at the moment understandably so the question of when Odyssey will be arriving on consoles was asked and again answered by FDev saying there is no news at the moment as the company is focused on getting the PC version of Odyssey into a better place before again turning to the console release but as soon as they had anything to share on that front they would let everyone know. As soon as we hear anything we will of course let you know here. A story appeared on the in-game Galnet newsfeed this week that followed up on the ongoing Colonia Bridge thread plotline running in the game at the moment. When originally spoken of the Brewer Corporation's Colonia Bridge was to be a string of permanently anchored dockable megaships extending all the way from the bubble to the Colonia region near the centre of the galaxy. Previous community goals to help build the Colonia Bridge had seen much prized double engineered frameshift drives offered up as a reward to the top 75 of participants in the CG. Such was the enthusiasm to get access to the frameshift drives in fact that Frontier had promised they would be available again at a later date. Following the Galnet post this week it appears that the later date they were speaking of is in fact January the 6th next year when the next phase of the Colonia Bridge begins, again this time adding starports to encourage what it calls micro communities between the bubble and Colonia. The post does specifically mention the much valued FSD rewards again. If you're after some of the drives and can put aside the time consider this fair warning and mark that date in your diary. CM Arthur Tolmy shared his end of year forum message to the community today in lieu of the regular developer updates we've become used to with the promise of a return to the scheduled dev updates in January. Instead the message included a different take on the images shown on the livestream that we spoke about earlier. One of the images is the same view but a higher quality image and the other is a different view entirely again showing the lighting hue presented by the local star reflected on the ground. We don't know yet if that ambient lighting also extends to space itself and environments like ring systems. It would be genuinely exciting to think that somewhere like the Taygeta system would be returning in Odyssey to its signature hues of purple that can still be enjoyed in Horizons. As far as further fixes for next weeks patch are concerned Arthurs post does mention the following issues specifically. Issues relating to inactive AI at conflict zones will now be resolved as will problems with hatchbreaker limpets used on cargo and escape hatches on non dockable megaships across Elite Dangerous Odyssey and Elite Dangerous Horizons. The thermal conduit engineering upgrade no longer has an incorrect damage increase applied and it's also correctly represented visually. Completing high influence missions will now affect background simulation as expected and I'm pleased to report stations will no longer suddenly pop into existence when jumping out of supercruise. My own ships repair teams will no doubt be overjoyed to hear that. The post then goes on to talk about the fleet carrier interior livestream that the team had promised would be arriving in December and announces that the expected carrier tour will be presented as part of the Elite Dangerous Christmas stream on December the 16th. 
The stream will feature one of the game developers talking about the carrier interiors but will also be mindful of spoilers so they won't be showing off the much requested viewable jump sequence from the bridge. The post didn't dwell too much on the year we've all just been through referring to it only as quote challenging unquote before quickly moving on to talk about the future mentioning that new features and mission types are being worked on for next year including what they referred to as a quote settlement defence unquote mission. It also says that 2022 will see the conclusion of the long running Azimuth saga in the game before promising that the narrative team are still not done after that. In fact we have heard from Arthur before that the plan is for the narrative in Elite to continue through 2022. The post then mentions that the team will be returning in January next year to talk more about the proposed engineering changes that were part of the recent community focused feedback drive on the forums. All in all the post was a little briefer and lighter on details than what we'd expected but it does seem that next week we have a very busy week in Elite Dangerous across Horizons and Odyssey. It's undoubtedly been a tough year for everyone in Elite for all sorts of reasons. I'd imagine Frontier are just as pleased to see the back of 2021 as we all are. Will you be tuning into the feature livestream over the next 2 weeks and if so what are you looking forward to seeing most? Let us know in the comments below. That's it for now. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back later this week with more videos. Until then ….o7 CMDRs follow the greens on the way out and do keep clear of the toast rack. We very much look forward to seeing you next time.